Hello, the internet. I'm Dr. Peter Allen. During the week, I am a bioanalytical chemist, but during the weekend, I like to make these little explainer videos. And today I want to talk about the images on the NIAID's Flickr page of the novel coronavirus. Now, these images are shared widely. They are colorized electron microscope images that are really pretty and are useful for lots of media outlets that are talking about the virus. But I want to look at one way, one line of evidence for determining exactly where the virus is. What is the virus in these images? How do we know that we're looking at the virus? And this is just one line of evidence. There are many, but I think it's interesting to look at antibody labeling as a way of determining what is in one of these images. This is the first of the NIAID's transmission electron microscope images that I want to show. And you can see it's in false color. The original is black and white. An artist went over it with some color to highlight some of the features. This is why they call it a coronavirus, because it kind of looks like a crown with the little gems all around the circle. So this is another image of coronavirus from the NIAID. This one, again, false colored, and you can see that not all of them are perfectly circular. Some of them have a more blobby shape. And I think that contributes to some of the confusion because there are non-viral cell bits that kind of look vaguely similar to this. And how are we to know that we're looking at coronaviruses other than someone with 10 years of experience knows what they're looking at and can tell us. This too highlights that. So in this case, they actually gave some of the details of how they prepared this image. So this is an image of a cell. They had two pools of cells, one of which was treated with coronavirus and one wasn't. Then they took those cells and put it on a scanning electron microscope and they could see that the image of the cells that had been infected had these little orange nodules. They were black and white when they originally captured it, but experienced microscopists could say that these nodules represented the coronavirus. So there's one individual coronavirus budding off of the surface of this infected cell. So the comparison in that case told them what they were looking at, the comparison between the uninfected and the infected cells. But to the untrained eye, without all the benefit of all that data, it's not necessarily obvious in black and white what these things are. So aside from 10 years of experience interpreting electron microscope images, what else can tell us what we're looking at? So I'm going to try to explain in immunohistochemistry, but it's a huge subject and I'm really simplifying it to make it digestible. And this is only one line of evidence. Immunohistochemistry is one way to identify something in a microscope image, but there are many, many more. And there's lots of other ways to look at the life cycle of a virus like this. What we need is something that binds specifically to that virus. And one thing you can use is an antibody. And to get an antibody, you have to start with an animal like a mouse. You inject the mouse with something that it can respond to with its immune system. We call this an antigen, a foreign substance that induces an immune response. So the antigen goes in. In this case, the antigen is the coronavirus. The mouse responds to that stimulus. It develops an immune response, it starts making antibodies, it kills the virus, but it still has all those antibodies which can then be harvested. So you take the antibody, a protein molecule made by the immune system that binds to the antigen, and you have now this almost <laughs> magic molecule that will bind to the thing you injected, in this case the coronavirus, and only that. So I draw the antibodies as a little Y shape, but there's a reason for that. They actually look more like this. That Y is inspired by an, a real uh, natural structure. The antibody, when it's exposed to the antigen, connects up to that antigen to form a complex. And this is how the immune system binds things and kills them in nature. But we can take those and use them for something else. So if we take an antibody and we chemically attach a label, something we can detect, like a dye, a gold nanoparticle, a radioactive isotope, or an enzyme, anything we can see, if we stick that on to an antibody, we have a labeled antibody. And that labeled antibody can then be applied to that antigen to make a labeled complex that we can then visualize under the microscope. And this is used for all kinds of things. This is a truly foundational technique in bioanalytical chemistry, in molecular biology. The idea that you can specifically label very specific protein or virus or anything in biology is really important. You can use it for a Western blot to measure the little bands and show that those bands really are one specific protein. You can use it for those lateral flow test strips like the virus diagnostic kits. You can use it in surface plasmon resonance to measure a given protein and its affinity for other proteins. If you take a sample of coronavirus, 
visualize, you see its specific morphology, you see the little circles with the little nodules, and you say, okay, that's probably coronavirus. You can add an antibody that has a tiny gold nanoparticle attached. And if you see those tiny gold nanoparticles clustered around one of these circles, you can say, okay, that is definitively a coronavirus. So these labels, these labeled antibodies, allow us to say with a lot more confidence exactly what we're looking at. And in this case, this is actually a, from a paper from 1991 looking at coronaviruses from turkeys. So this isn't a new technique. This has been well established for decades. In the last year, some clever researchers, Erman et al., took this to the next level. They took human tissue from an infected person who had the coronavirus, and they sectioned it, and they did this technique where they labeled the viruses with these antibodies, but in this case, they did it with an antibody that turns brown. So this brown cell is an infected cell amidst all these blue cells that are uninfected. Then they took that same tissue, that same little bit of infected tissue, and sliced it extremely thin, and took that, put that into a transmission electron microscope and imaged it there as well so they could see the much finer detail of this cell and how it's being affected. But they went one step further and figured out how to do this nano gold nanoparticle labeling to specifically call out objects that might otherwise not be identifiable as a virus, but they can clearly show that, yeah, this little dot here that is a coronavirus and you know because it's got these little nanoparticles all stuck to it based on that antibody label so i hope you found that interesting if you did i hope you give me a little thumbs up that'll tell me i should make more of this content it'll tell the algorithm that it could share this content more widely with that i will leave you until next time this has been peter allen for the allen lab